How's everybody today? Wonderful. Wonderful. Anybody else wonderfuler than Miss Janine this morning? <laughs> Nobody's more wonderful than Miss Janine. Never, never. <laughs> never. <laughs> you try, oh, you're trying to raise the roof? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Trying, trying to get everybody excited? excited. Yes. Miss Janine's up there trying to get everybody in the. Yes. <laughs> We're going to start the wave over here, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, good morning. Thank you, folks, for being here today. And yeah, just before you get into the serious stuff, a few silly things. Uh, Remind us about life is not so serious, amen? And so it says it's dangerous oh, to eat tent poles with kids, you know, because kids are scary, right? <laughs> so it's a pit bull who's grown on with kids. Kids are scary. When you finally meet the person that's been feeding you pickles and flaming hot Cheetos for nine months, that's the, the death stare you get when that's what they've been feeding you for nine months. These other two are silly. Do not take them serious at all, okay? Please don't be offended. It says, the visitor sits in the wrong pew. Try that in a small church. <laughs> right? Try that in a Amen. small church sitting in the wrong That's pew. True. <laughs> when you pray to get rich in church and someone brings you a bowl full of money, right? Yeah. There you go. It's a bowl full of money there. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So. That's uh, some silly things this morning. I hope and pray that if someone sits in your seat this morning, or if the church changes the entire auditorium around and steals your seat, that uh, you'll come in and still have a good spirit this morning and enjoy. It's not about ourselves. We're here for who? The Lord. We're here for the Lord. So it's just some silly things this morning. So all right, into our announcements. Some things we have going on. Thank you. Yesterday. We were able to serve. We didn't have a whole lot of kids show up, but we had some kids. We got to serve lunch to and uh, minister to. And the charity got a, a decent connection yesterday with one of the parents. And so maybe going to follow up with them and uh, try and minister to them some more. Uh, but thank you for those that were there yesterday serving at the Kids Day. And it's always good to minister to the youth of Yermo. Uh, tonight, or actually right after the service this morning, uh, have some news about the parsonage. Um, just to let the cow a bag, we did not get approved for the loan, and so we have uh, some discussion to make, and I need to make some decisions by next week. So after church this morning, uh, we're going to discuss the parsonage, and if you uh, have want to hear what's going on, um, we're going to go through some different options for you all, and then next Sunday we're going to vote on what we're going to do uh, moving forward. So hope if you want to be a participant in that tonight, 6 o'clock, is our Faith Family Fine Fellowship, as uh, we'll study the Word, and then we're going to play bingo. And so bingo after church tonight, 6 p.m., if you want to be here, and normally we're done by about 7.15, plenty of time to go home and still get some rest. Uh, other things going on this week, uh, do not have the youth outreach, not until uh, after Memorial Day, so we have, the, we do have commodities, what? Labor Day, Memorial Day, Labor Day. That, that, that holiday is in September. Yes, that one. Um, but, we'll skip the, but we do have our Wednesday Bible study this week at 5.30. Yermo Commodities on Friday. If anybody's able to help, that's at 9 o'clock. We'll start serving at 9.30. If you can just help with us getting set up, that would be a blessing. And then the other thing we have going on, uh, on August 27th is our community barbecue. We're combining. Normally on the last Sunday of the month, we have a potluck in here, and so what we're going to do is instead of having a potluck all to ourselves, is we're going to go down to the CSD and share that potluck with the whole community. And so we'll have the hamburgers, hot dogs, and if you guys will be faithful to begin to think about what you can bring for that huge potluck, and we'll invite the community out and have a good meal with them, and to have the bounce house set up for the kids, and that'll be a good time, August 27th. And then the other one is, I don't have it on the bulletin because uh, we didn't find out about it this morning. September 2nd, ladies, September 2nd, ladies is going to be a ladies shopping trip, correct? Yes. September 2nd, 9 a.m., leaving here from the church, and the ladies are going to have a shopping trip on the 2nd, and then the 5th is ladies night for here at Bible study here at the church, and then the 9th is something I want you to start thinking about and praying about is Yermo Days, and I believe they're having a parade. So what I'd like to do is to get as much of us church folks as we can, and uh, we're going to parade ourselves down here on road or whatever it is. So uh, we'll just show the folks that we care. We're going to put together some 
bags of candy with the gospel track in it and throw them to all the folks on it, all 10 people on the side of the road in Miramo, uh, and uh, be a blessing there. And then also, I'd like to have a booth at the Yermo Days um, place. What I'd like to do is have a little game for the kids to play, t- t- tossing the ball in the bucket, and have some decent sized prizes to give away if they can do it. Uh, but uh, need somebody to, A, I need folks for the parade. We just have four or five sh- people show up and be like, oh, that's just a small, tiny church. No, I want, man, that's a really good sized church. And lots of young folks and older folks and happy folks and sad folks. I want to go to that church. <laughs> All right, so that's on Yermo Days at September 9th. The, I believe the parade starts at 9 because the, the, car, the, the, the race just starts at 10. Uh, that'd be something you guys would be help out. All I need to do is just walk a little ways, wave and smile if you can, and toss out some bags of candy. Uh, that's on September 9th. And also we need someone to run the booth that we have in the Yermo days. Um, so those are things if you're interested in, please let me know. And I appreciate your help with that. So those are the announcements. Also in September, uh, I believe towards the end of the month, we're going to take a church trip to the Getty Museum. And so that's something you can look forward to uh, as well. Birthdays, no birthdays this week. I believe the 16th is next Sunday, actually. So Zariah, uh, she's not here this morning. I think she might be the one that's sick. She is. Zariah is the one that's sick this morning. And so hopefully she's feeling better next Sunday. Next Sunday, we're going to sing happy birthday to Zariah, Addison, Fred, Bridget, Chester, and myself. It's all of our birthdays next week. And so Chester, you came in. Happy birthday to you coming up. And then uh, we have Fred as well. Your birthday's coming up. Happy birthday, Fred. And then we'll have all these folks to sing happy birthday. That'd be fun. To sing happy birthday to Happy birthday to you. Everybody be confused and sing them all me. So uh, those are my outfits as I know them. And uh, thank you so much for uh, being here this morning. Let's go ahead and get into our worship time. So we're going to spend the first few minutes of our worship praising God on the most important things we can do to worship him is to praise him and so praise time uh, this morning my praise as i already mentioned yesterday the youth thing uh had some folks show up to help us pass out hot dogs thankful for janine for providing the hot dogs and the buns and uh, cindy and bonnie bought the chips so all the church had to buy was the sodas and sodas and nope and a few buns uh, but i'm thankful for you guys providing that so we could be out there Trying to be a witness to help to the youth of your home. So pray for our youth ministry. Uh, we get started back up, but thankful for that this week. So anybody else got a praise this week? Something good? Ivy? Oh, uh, getting to go back to the water park again tomorrow. So yeah, our last chance to get to go before the summer's over next tomorrow. So that'll be a praise. Good time there. Anybody else? Good praise? Something good happened to you this week with Jana? Our air conditioning went out a couple of days ago, and praise God it hasn't been that hot. And Terry was able to order the part and get it back in yesterday. So it's fixed and running so it's back fixed. in. <laughs> it's got, it was getting pretty hot in the house. I like bet it was warmer outside. Oh, yeah, better warmer inside than it was outside. We haven't used fans for a long time, but we started using them. <laughs> Absolutely. So praise God for air conditioning, and praise God when it works. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Got a praise this morning, something good happened to you. you want to praise the Lord about? My baby? I'm thankful for the ladies that showed up to help yesterday. I didn't have many kids as we thought we would, but um, it's just wanted to have friendship and help and visit. And I'm thankful for the rain this week. The rain, amen. How many of y'all got rain this week? Just a few, just your car. It just rained on your car and that was it? Yes. <laughs> Amen. Praise God for the rain. Tom, I saw your hand come up. Oh, but uh, my son will make a doctor appointment. And that's how he has to, what he has to do to get another power chair. Somebody stole this power chair. Oh, oh no. They have two, they have a little one to get into the house. The big one doesn't deliver in my house. And so they drug the other one out of the yard. Oh. So. So pray for Matt to get a new one. Yeah, so make a doctor He's just he's all buttered about that. He don't want to do that. For whatever reason. Absolutely. I so don't Tom. know why. Tom's son Matt. He has to establish himself with a new doctor. 
And that does the good part when I ask him to do that. <coughs> so. Yes, sir. We have Matt on there already, but we'll pray specifically for Matt to get a new appointment for his wheelchair. Absolutely. Well, just to have a doctor appointment. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, it's Peggy. I just praise the Lord that my husband and my daughter have the teeth fixed finally. For the teeth getting fixed? Yep. Amen. That's always good to have teeth. Yeah. My son Noah is losing all his teeth, so he lost another one this week. I think he's down to like eight total teeth in his mouth, so. But uh, it's good to have that, for sure. Fred, you have a praise? My help and for my help and all of our help and family here. Praise or pray for it. Praise. Praise God that Fred's feeling better and uh, family's doing well. Amen. Awesome. It's good to have you this morning. Carol? I want to praise the Lord that we got our bathroom fixed up on fixed as home for this the bathroom picks up, and I know that last week Carol was thankful for Ben's help, and this week you're thankful for Ben's help, so then you're quite the hero around here. So <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Awesome. Anybody else got to pray something good God did for you this week? You gave us a gas speaker this morning. Amen. All of us. Praise God for the finances to, to get to church and to worship Him. Absolutely. Amen. Ben? Just going to praise him for all the work he's given. Ben, for getting Amen. more work. <laughs> Amen. All right. Yes, sir, Bob. I'm afraid I got a job. I'm going to start working tomorrow. Bob, how many times is this you, you retired? Is this your third time going back to work or something? <laughs> Bob just can't sit still, so he's going to go find him a job and get to work, so. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be that. I said. I told Bob if I lived in Yermo and I was retired, I too would be looking for a job. But my prayer is that I can retire at Disney World and uh, oh. that I'll get to go every day and go to Disney World. And so that would be that would be my my prayer for my retirement. But that's that's a long ways off. So Bob for a new job. My wife laughs because that's not her. That's not her thing. She would love to retire in Yermo and just live out her days since quiet and solitude. <laughs> right? Yes. Not me. I want people and Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Anybody else praise this morning? This is good. This is the best thing we have. It's just praise God. All right. We'll go ahead and turn on to our prayer requests this morning. And so we're going to take prayer requests for a minute or two and spend a little bit of time in prayer and then take up our offering. Is there anybody uh, able to help me out with the offering this morning? Malaya is going to take the offering. Who else? Ben? I saw his hand up. So Malaya. And Ben, you guys will take up the offering this morning. Just a few minutes. Let's go ahead and go through prayer requests. In Sunday school, Carol Bedell asked us, well, she didn't ask us because she's not here. We're just making people pray for her. Please pray for Carol Bedell as she's traveling. I believe she gets back this week. Is that correct? So she'll be back this week. So pray for Carol while she's traveling with her family and coming home. Um, Jana added the Little family. That's their last name, the Little family. I don't know if they're little or not. But the Little family for their health. They're normal. They're normal. <laughs> they're normal size. Amen. What's that? <laughs> what is normal? Amen. We don't know. Um, Cindy added Doug and Liz. This is her dad and stepmom, Doug and Liz, for their health. Vida asks us to remember her family as they're traveling. Tom, of course, just mentioned his son to get a doctor appointment. Charlotte and the kids are at home sick this morning. Zariah is one that's sick. And, uh, as you know, when kids get sick, it spreads. And I think they have five there. So praying for Charlotte and their family that it would just be Zariah and no more sickness. So anybody else got something to add to our prayer sheet this morning? Fred? Larry's wife's in the hospital, and also his son had his gold bladder removed. Wife and son? All right, so Larry Staggs. Y'all know 
Larry, the mayor of Yermo over here, right? Uh, mayor of Yermo, Larry Staggs, is uh, not the mayor of Yermo. <laughs> I think he's the mayor of Yermo. He's the nicest guy there was. So praise God for Larry Staggs. He helps a lot of people. He helps a lot of people. So we need to pray for Larry's wife and for his son. His son is the, the mayor of Daggett, I think. So I'm not sure. Maybe the Staggs family. Pray for them. Anybody else? Yes, Christine. Uh, Rain had a test for her thing with her head for three days. Oh, my. Rain had tests this week. Rain is about halfway down, and we have her under health, and so for tests. Miss Jana? I think we should pray for Hawaii. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm so, I feel awful. I, I so know I'm supposed to put it on there, but absolutely, folks, pray for All the people, you know, mm -hmm. this tragedy yeah. could turn them to the Lord. Folks of Maui. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Pray for the folks there in Maui. 100%. Anybody else for request this morning? Daniel. My cousin, though, we still have a stomach problem. He keeps going back in. They can't figure out what's wrong. They did a CAT scan on him. They, they don't know what's going on, so he's going to another doctor this week. Almost down at the bottom, you see Cat, and so Cat has a health request, correct? So Cat has some, some health issues, and then Dylan right next to that has some health issues as well. So praying for Cat for her health, and Dylan as well. Last chance. Yes, ma'am, it's Peggy. I still haven't gotten my uh, results of my uh, x-rays. Praying for test results back, absolutely. Great. Miss Peggy of Aldo, she's on there. Peggy. For her health and for test results. So. Alright, one other thing I forgot to mention, I'm sorry, but this is under Charity's name. No, it's under Charity, it's under Carol's name. Betty. Under Carol's name is Betty, is uh, Miss Peggy and my neighbor. She had a tumor removed from her colon. And uh, they had to take that out, repair her colon. She is still not able to eat, uh, but she is feeling better. But uh, I know I would, I would appreciate it, Carol, and uh, we would all appreciate you praying for our neighbor, uh, Miss Betty Christensen, is her name. So she's recovering from that procedure. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Let's spend a few minutes praying aloud. Would you all pray? In your seats, pray for these requests. <clears throat> pray for the sermon this morning. Uh, we are focusing on salvation for the most part, salvation, salvation alone. And so, listen, if you're in the room this morning and you have a little bit of doubt whether you're going to spend eternity in heaven, uh, listen, spend some time praying that the Spirit of God will speak to our hearts this morning, uh, that we might uh, know for sure that heaven is our home. Not because of what Pastor Cody says this morning. But we're going to look at the words of Jesus Christ and what he says about salvation. So let's pray for God to speak to hearts this morning. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, to us so that we could have salvation. Lord, the greatest blessing of all is knowing that our sins are forgiven. Lord, they are under the blood of Jesus Christ. And through Jesus and Jesus alone, we have hope. Lord, that there is more to this life and this pain and this misery and the trouble. God, we know that through Jesus Christ, we have a home waiting for us in heaven. Prepared with mansions, the Bible says, streets of gold. Lord, we're so thankful that we're in the presence of the Lord. God, there's going to be crowns and prizes for those that are faithful to you. Uh, Lord, it's going to be a glorious place. Uh, Lord, certainly more glorious than, uh, Lord, what we deserve. God, as sinners, as those of us who are from the sinful race of Adam, God, we deserve the second death, which is eternal life in the lake of fire. Lord, by Jesus Christ, Lord, we don't have to go to hell. We don't have to spend eternity in torment. But we, through Jesus, can spend eternity with you. Thank you, God, so much for Jesus. Thank you for the word of God that teaches us about Jesus. And the word of this book is not fairy tale. It's not something that somebody wrote or made up. God, this book, the Bible that you've given us, is your word. And Lord, it is true. It is true. It is true. Try it. Try it again. It is true. 
Thank you that we have the Bible that teaches us about salvation in Jesus. But we're so thankful that it teaches us about the church, God, that we are to come together, uh, Lord, and to worship you together and, and to sing and praise and give. And Lord, what a wonderful blessing it is to have this church here. Thank you for the people that are here. Thank you for how you blessed our church. And Lord, we're so, 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 so thankful for Silver Valley Baptist Church. Uh, Lord, it started in 1989. And Lord, for years, it's had its ups and downs. And Lord, the fires. And Lord, but through it all, Father God, many souls have been saved. Many lives have been changed. And Lord, we're praying that the future, uh, Lord, of this church is so bright. And God, that it will continue to grow. Lord, just pray for the service this morning that you give us a great time as we focus on the gospel. As we turn to John chapter 3 and we look at the conversation between Jesus, Lord, Father God, and Lord, I pray that this conversation, Lord, between Jesus Christ, uh, Lord, would be an encouragement to our hearts. That we would understand, just like he's talking to me, like he's talking to me, how I can know that heaven is my home. Lord, that we would have the assurance of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to tell us how we can have salvation. Lord, how I pray for these requests this morning. Lord, I pray you would just be with Miss Carol. She's away this week. And Lord, give her safety as she travels. Lord, you pray for my friend Miss Betty. Chris is in this morning as she heals in the hospital. Lord, I pray that Lord, she gets to eat soon. And Lord, that the surgery that this repair would be, uh, Lord, precise. And Lord, she gets to come home soon. And Lord, they live her life. Pray there's no cancer. Lord, there was a chance that this tumor is cancerous. And God, I pray that there be no cancer. Lord, do pray for the Boyd family and just watch over them. Uh, Lord, for charity requests, for homeschooling, for my friend, Pastor Reed, for healing. Just thank you of all the Lord. Would you lift her up? Pray for her test results for her family. Uh, Lord, Miss Jan has asked us to pray for the little family, that you just heal them as they're in the hospital this morning. And uh, Lord, also remind us of the folks in Maui this morning that, uh, Lord, are struggling. Lord, loss of their homes, the loss of loved ones. Lord, I pray as Jana asks 100% that, Lord, through this tragedy, that Jesus Christ would work and that folks would see uh, Jesus through this. We know that through tragedy, Lord God, that you work even through the hard times to bring us to you. So be with these folks, we pray. Pray for Cindy's family, for Doug and for Liz and for uh, Lord, back pain. Think of her back pain. Pray for our friend Marissa and Pastor Ray there in Newberry. Would you put your arms around her and see the strength of her body? Uh, Lord, for rain. Praying for these test results to come back positive, that you strengthen her. I think of Chester and his health, and his daughter Sarah, continue to recover her. Bless Sandy and Greg for their health and healing, and their son Richard. Lord, Miss Vita's family, be with them, and continue to strengthen Miss Vita. And Lord, she asks Miss Vita as well to pray for her sister Loretta, who's struggling with dementia. Tammy, come with Mike for healing. Lord, for Tom and for Matt and Candy. Uh, Lord, pray specifically that you help Matt to get this doctor's appointment. Think of Charlotte for her request for unsaved family to be saved. And Lord, for the little girl, Lord, the views are right. And heal her and pray that it wouldn't spread. Lord, for Lorna's request for her family, Sandy uh, and Barry, for the Jerusalem and world unrest. For Ben, for his friend Albert, for Ben's health, for Kat's health, for Dylan. Fred, Lord, praying for their family and for our friend Larry and his wife and his son. That you just be with Larry and his wife and their son. And Lord, put your arms around them through this difficult time. Lord, pray for... We have spoken requests for Alan, Chanel, Leroy, Kat, and Donnie. That you just be with these dear folks and answer these requests. Pray for our missionaries, the Connors, the Trills, the Bundys, Hazlitt, the Denise family, the Craig family. Lord, I pray for them. And the Burnett's, Mission Dignity, Bless Camp Ironwood. For our friend, my friends, the Kim and the Yaff family as they start these churches in L.A. in just a few months. That you allow these churches to be a great lighthouse there in a place that needs to Full of people and full of sin, but God, they need churches. Lord, continue to send church planners across our country, across our state, and missionaries across the world that souls will be saved. I just pray once again that you just be with this offering we're about to receive. Thank you for those that give. So thankful for Lord how we're continuing to uh, add funds to our, our parsonage fund. And we're just praying that you give us wisdom. As, uh, Lord, we heard the uh, little bit difficult news that uh, we didn't get the loan approved. And, Lord, I pray that you just give us wisdom. And Lord, my prayer is that you would provide this need, to provide this house for you, that you be your will. Lord, well, thank you for what you can do. Bless the gift and the giver, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, lay it up. Then if you guys would take the offer this morning, thank you.
sing songs about the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so if you're able to, please stand as we sing song number 186 and 186, the old rugged cross. sanctified, 
through the blood. Not by our works, but by Jesus Christ. And so thankful for the cross. And so we're going to sing another song about the blood of Jesus. Hymn number 195. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hymn 195.
off, but that's the one there. Amazing grace. Come for amazing grace. My chains are gone. The chains of sin, the chains of death are gone. He has ransomed and set me free. A good song picture there of salvation. So one more song, and this is about transformation, the butterfly song. And so transformation, the butterfly song is our children's chorus this morning. And so let's sing the butterfly song. It goes like this. If I were a butterfly, I thank you, Lord, for giving me wings. And if I were a robin in a tree, I thank you, Lord, that I could see. And if I were a fish in the sea, I'd wiggle my tail and I'd giggle with glee. But I just thank you, Father, for making me be. Because you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me your child. And I just thank you, Father, for making me me. If I were an elephant, I'd thank you, Lord, by raising my trunk. And if I were a kangaroo, I'd just hop right up to you. And if I were an octopus, I thank you, Lord, for my good looks. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. Because you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me your child. I just thank you, Father, for making me me. If I were a wiggly word, I thank you, Lord, that I could squirm. And if I were a crocodile, I thank you, Lord, for my big smile. And if I were a fuzzy, fuzzy bear, I thank you, Lord, for my fuzzy, fuzzy hair. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. Because you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me your child. And I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. Silly, silly song there, but I was sharing the game about Jesus Christ. And so with that said, children, you guys can go ahead and be dismissed. I don't plan on being long this morning, honey, Dave, so be quick and probably we'll be done before you. And parents can just wait for you. But uh, we'll go ahead and get into our last study here. In our top 10 Bible verses. And so just for the beginning, the introduction of this, I'm going to preach to those of you who know for sure uh, you're saved. Okay? Really been praying all week long that God would get a hold of folks' hearts this morning. Uh, to help us understand uh, that by Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ alone, as John 3.16 says, For God has loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son... That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so that someone this morning would realize, that come to the understanding, that this is not a religion. Okay? That what we're in is in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I believe still in this room, though most of us here have been coming here for a while, I believe that there's still some folks clinging on to religion. That your religion is what's going to be to get you to heaven. And we're going to look at a religious man this morning who comes to Jesus. And Jesus tells him, no man has ever been religious enough or good enough or righteous enough to go to heaven. But I came down to you to bring you up to be with the Father. And so I hope and pray this morning that those of us that are saved, uh, we've been talking about last week, the victorious Christian life, uh, that God wants you to live in victory. We said last week, folks, God does not want the Christian to think that we are defeated, that we are the, the losers, we are the winners. Every day of our life is victory through Jesus Christ. And the number one verse that I hope you get through all of this and you have an understanding of it, is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The number one most important verse that you should have memorized is John 3, 16, because without this verse, 
you will not know salvation. It doesn't, none of these other verses matter for you. If you haven't put your faith in Jesus Christ for your eternal life, you don't, these other verses don't matter. And so that's why we're going to take some time this morning before we move on to the book of Revelation next Sunday, <clears throat> is to just take some time tearing apart this verse so that you know your sins are forgiven, not by your righteousness, not by your church, not by your baptism, but by Jesus Christ and Him alone. And the next most important verse talking about the uh, victorious Christian life is this. We talked about last week. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If there's any other verse in the Bible that I want you to memorize, it's this verse. Psalm 118, 24. Write it down, mark it down, highlight it, underline it, work on it this week. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The understanding, whatever happens today, this is a verse you quote in the morning. This is a quote you, vote, you quote in the afternoon. This is a verse you quote in the evening. This is the day, God, you made. And I will rejoice and be glad in the day that you have given me. And I hope and pray. The Gospel, John 3, 16. And here, this glorious verse about victory will be in your hearts and in your head. And then I just went through these other verses, different topics that we've talked about. Here, about God. Know, therefore, and consider in thine heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven, and the earth beneath. There is none else. And that we get in our heads and we have in our hearts this verse and many other verses that I've given you about the Lord. He is in control. He is in charge. He created you. He loves you. He's going to take care of you. And in the end of times, He's going to be the one standing. And we're going to be the ones bowing down and worshiping the Father. Folks, if you do not enjoy worship, you are not going to enjoy heaven. If you don't enjoy getting up and going to church, if you don't enjoy opening your Bible and learning about God and praying to God, you are going to be disappointed in heaven. Because for all eternity, that's what we're going to be doing. Worshiping who? God the Father. And folks, the more you know about Him on earth, the more prepared and the more ready you will be to know Him. And then, of course, not just the Lord, but we will know His Word. Our Bibles. Jesus said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, the Bible, and doeth them, are like them unto a wise man which builds house upon a rock. I cannot stress the importance of knowing God. How do we know God? How do we know salvation? How do we know a victorious Christian life? Only by this book. Not by what I preach. Not by what the TV preacher says. We know God. We know the Spirit. We know Jesus by opening this book and reading it and understanding it. And I, I think I put this on the slideshow last week, uh, but I've been using this in our Sunday school hour, our Sunday school time, we go through our Sunday school lesson. When you read your Bible, you read it, okay? Um, my pastor friends, if you're new to the Bible, would encourage you to start in the book of Matthew and reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, if, if, if you start anywhere, start there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those tells us the stories of Jesus. And if you're new to your Bible reading, this is what you do. You open your Bible, and how much ever time you've got, you read. And when you begin to come to something that you don't understand, okay, you stop. And you try to find an explanation. So some people, and I think it's you, Miss Bonnie, that has a, a explanation stuff under some of your scriptures, correct? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, my Bible, I, I don't have that. I would encourage you, there's one called the Life Application Bible. Uh, there's other different but, but Bible studies that you can open to. But it's in your Bible, you read a passage, and then down here, or sometimes in the middle, is the explanation to that passage. And it helps you understand what is, what is John Matthew chapter 1 about. And then comes the application. This is something that takes experience. Okay? Uh, I would be happy, the Lord would be happy if you're new to the Bible, to read it and to just spend time letting the Bible explain itself to you. But then after you've read it a few times, now comes the application part. This is the part where you take the Bible and you say, well, why did God write that? What's the purpose of that verse? And then you say, well, I think it's for me. 
God wrote that verse for me today. We don't just read our Bible to be religious, folks. We don't just read our Bibles to know about God. We read our Bibles because it speaks to who? Me. Every day. God wants you to learn something from his word to help you in your life. And then after you find an application, you determine. So this morning, I'm going to preach on John chapter 3. And I'm going to explain it to you. And then I'm going to give you an application. And at the end of the service, I'm going to have you guys pray some prayers. That's the same process. Read the Bible, explain it, apply it to my life, and then now I'm going to make a decision that, God, I'm going to do this for you. And that's what we do with our Bibles. And of course, we learned about Jesus Christ, that he is the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. In John 1, 29, we need to know about the Spirit of God. I mean, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will what? Guide you. He will give you wisdom and all truth. For whatsoever ye shall hear that shall he speak, he will show you things to come. The Spirit of God guides us in our life daily. As you listen to the scriptures, as you follow Jesus Christ and understand his leading, he gave us the Spirit of God today to direct our lives, to help us make every decision. Every decision that you make on a daily basis, the Spirit of God wants you to make that decision. I think of our church right now. We have to make a decision about my housing, for my family. The house we're living in is getting sold. And so we have to decide as a church, are we going to buy that house? Or are we going to do something else with our pastor? And so this is what we do. We pray. And that's what we're going to do this week, is we're going to ask the Spirit of God to give us wisdom. And folks, listen, the Spirit will always bring us to unity. And so if we will pray this week, God, I pray for the Spirit of God to give me wisdom of what to do about the parsonage. When we come back next Sunday, guess what? If we truly pray and we're truly filled with the Spirit, we will what? Unanimously, with a wholehearted agreement, come to a decision. Why? Because the Spirit's going to lead us to truth. And He's going to lead us together. But maybe there'll be someone next week who won't have the Spirit of God leading them. They'll have their own selfish things to say and their own desires. And there won't be unity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But folks, we pray for the Spirit to what? Guide us. And He will always guide us to have unity. So folks, when there is disruption in your life, when there is disunity, when there is chaos, we know that's not a God, right? God doesn't want us to be disrupted. In my marriage, right? God wants there to be unity. And in order there to be the unity, there have to be two people being led by the Spirit of God daily. And when we come together, we are what? Unified. Is that possible every single day of our life that two people are led 100% by the Spirit of God? Yes or no? Yes or no? No. Okay? It is not possible for two human beings... To be led every single day of their life in the spirit of God. Okay? Because what? The devil and sin and selfishness comes around. So what does that mean? That means, Pastor Cody, in your marriage is not going to be what? Perfect. There's not a single marriage on this planet that was perfect. Okay? There was problems. There was discussions. Now, there may have not been fights. And you, and you may be married to the sweetest person. I know I, I think of Janine right now is just waiting to shout. I had a perfect husband, and our marriage was perfect. Because well, not perfect, perfect, but really, really was wonderful. You had a man and a woman blessed. who were listening to the Spirit of God and wanted what was best for each other. So that when there was disunity, when there was an issue, you had one that was willing to say, yes, dear, you're right. Yes, dear, you're right. And the Spirit of God, folks, is going to lead us to unity. But when we're not living in the Spirit of God, when we're not listening to, the, to, to His leading, there is never going to be peace. There's always going to be problems. So you have to pray for your own self. Help me to listen to the Spirit today. Well, what if my spouse is not saved? What if my spouse is not listening to the Spirit of God? You pray for them. You pray for them. And you lead the way. You lead the way in peace. You lead the way 
to where I'm going to give. And eventually, through your prayers and through your love and through the Spirit of God, Lord willing, there'll be some bending. There'll be some mending. There'll be some sweet times. But you, if you're in this room this morning, you have to take responsibility for who? <clears throat> Yourself. And you have to pray for the Spirit of God to help you be the best what? Spouse you can be. You can't control them. I can't control my wife. Trust me, I've tried. It don't work. She is her own person. She don't make her own decisions, okay? And guess what? She can't control me either. She tried. It don't work, okay? My wife and I are polar opposites in so many ways. I am an introvert of all introverts. She is an extrovert. I like to go do stuff and have fun and be with Mickey Mouse. She likes to stay home uh, with her family and, and to read books. I hate reading. She loves reading. I love Marvel superheroes and Star Wars. She loves uh, Frozen 2. We watched it this week. She loves princesses and fairy tales. We're so opposite. But yet, guess what? The Spirit of God will lead us to what? Together. I know we're not being led by the Spirit of God when there's what? Conflict. In your life, in our church, in your relationships, you know there's conflict when someone's not being led by the Spirit of God. And you pray and you do what you is led to do. And that's when we get to the fruits of the Spirit. I guess prayer with the next one, but the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 22, 23. But the love, fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, jealous, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. That's what the Spirit of God is going to lead you to do. Every time. If you say a mean, nasty word, you are not being led by the Spirit. If you're thinking dirty, nasty thoughts about someone, that's not, that's not of the Spirit. That's of the flesh. The Spirit of God is going to lead us to love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, self-control. Against such there is no law. And of course, prayer, Luke 11, 2 through 4. Victorious Christian life. You want to live a victorious Christian life. Memorize these verses. Write them down. The Bible talks about how in the Old Testament... Put them as frontlets before your eyes. Meaning it's something you see constantly. When I get up in the morning, I see these verses. For me, this is the verse that I need to have before me. Corinthians 13, 4-7. I've been meaning for the whole last two weeks as I preach this message to ask my wife to, to, prettily, to, pre, to do a pretty artwork with this verse on it. Some of you guys have seen on Facebook. My wife will post sometimes some artwork she does of verses. This is the verse... That I need to have before my eyes. Because I know sometimes I cannot be very loving. I'm not a mean person. Sometimes I know I cannot be very loving. <clears throat> so this is the verse. The Pastor Cody. I, charity, love suffers long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not its own, but is easily, not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. This is my verse. This is where Pastor Cody struggles. Okay? I need this verse before my eyes and in my heart to remember what love is. And then Hebrews 11, 6, the last verse. For without faith, no faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is... And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. With faith, with trust and hope and confidence in God, we are going to please him and we're going to live a life of victory. We may defeat, we may get hurt, we may fall down. But listen, by faith we will have the victory through the Lord. And I hope and pray these verses were a help to you uh, as we study these top ten Bible verses. Now we're going to get into the last one today. John chapter 3, 16. And I hope and pray I am going to do something different. I'm sorry this morning. Uh, I was going to just read a small passage with you guys standing. Uh, but instead, I'm going to read this whole passage and you're going to sit down because I want to explain it a little bit. Otherwise, you guys will be standing for 20 minutes and you all will be mad and frustrated. So in order to have some appeasement, I'm going to read this passage slowly. But I want you to follow along. And yes, this verse is mostly for people uh, who are not saved. But this verse is also good for those who are saved 
to share the gospel with someone who's not saved. So you can say, I know someone who needs to hear the gospel. Pastor Cody, what would I show them? Well, here it is. This conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus. And so we're going to walk through this past of scripture. And folks, we're going to pray real quick. And I'm going to walk through this past of scripture and, and, and some other verses on salvation. As I pray, would you pray that the Spirit of God will speak to someone's heart this morning? And someone who's not sure of their salvation would find surety in this time this morning. Let's pray. God, thank you for the chance once again to study your word. Lord, I've been preparing and praying all week that you bring the right people into this room. Lord, there are some specific folks I was praying for and they're not here this morning. But Lord, maybe I pray that they, they would hear this message. Or someone would share this message with them. Lord, that they would hear salvation by grace and grace alone. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And that they would understand that, Lord, we don't care about uh, what they do. You don't, you're not looking for them to do something special. You're just wanting them to believe. Put their faith in Jesus this morning. God, I pray, pray, pray that you would use this message to turn someone's heart to you. That they would go from being on the way to hell to being saved and on the way to heaven. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 18 says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Nicodemus was a religious man. Okay? He lived his entire life believing that his religion... His works was going to get him a special place in heaven. He wasn't just a religious man. He was a really religious man. And not only was he a really religious man, but it tells us he was a ruler of the really religious people. Okay? Do you get that? This is not just some normal dude. This is an extremely religious ruler of the Jews. And he had been seeing Jesus. And he had heard Jesus. And he understood. And I believe the Spirit of God was speaking to his heart to say, go talk to that man. Because you're wrong. Your entire life you've lived is in vain. And you need to go have a conversation with this man and ask him how you can get to heaven. And this really religious ruler, the same night came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, teacher, we know thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. He says, I know there's something different about you. I'm a really religious ruler. And I can't do these miracles. I need to know what's going on here. Why do you have power that I don't? Why do you have peace that I don't? Why is your message bringing people to God and our message is turning people away? Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He says, I'm a really religious ruler. You're a holy, godly man. What's the difference? And Jesus says to him, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's heaven. Unless you be born again. Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Pretty, uh, Stupid question if you ask me. I certainly would have asked that question, but Nicodemus, obviously, though he was a really religious ruler, truly didn't have all the answers. But Jesus said, except a man be born of water, that's birth from your mother, and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Jesus said, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. What he says here is this. 
No, no, Nicodemus. I'm not telling you that you have to go back into your mother's womb and be born again. That was your first birth. I'm talking about your second birth. Your second birth, where you are born spiritually. Nicodemus had been living his life in the flesh for himself. He hadn't once thought about his spiritual life. He was a spiritual person, but he didn't have the spirit of God. He had religion and the law and works, but he didn't have salvation. Could you imagine that? I told you guys how I watched a, a documentary on a Mormon this week. A man who grew up his entire life being told that if you follow these principles, you will get to have the highest heaven. To the point to where you will have your own planet and have your own spirit, spirit beings. And for his whole life, he would believe that as a kid. As a young man, he went for two years to Mexico and went and preached that heresy to many people there in Mexico. He came home, he got married, went to Brigham Young University, Mormon College, got married in the temple, served in the temple, and then, as he said, he went to where he finally didn't have the pressure to be religious anymore. He was on his own. He had his family. He had his wife. He had done all of the steps. And now he was like, what's next? I feel empty. I feel pointless. I have no point to my life. And he'd go to church and he'd come home. And, and instead of having peace, he'd have problems. Why? Why is it that I've been so religious? I followed all of the rules. And yet I still feel as empty as I've ever been. This young man... And, that, and here, our man named Nicodemus, exact same. Mormonism, Judaism, Catholicism, um, Methodism, all these isms, these religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, is a whole life lived of do, 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 and you'll receive heaven. And that's where Nicodemus is at. And Jesus says, nah. -uh. You're born of the flesh, and all of your fleshly things are going to go. Only those that are born of the Spirit, the second birth, are going to get to go to heaven. We're going to talk a little bit about the first death and the second death. The first death is when you die in the flesh. The second death is when you are eternally separated from God. And only those who are born again, meaning you have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, are going to escape the second death. And so he says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, now hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So it's everyone that is born of the Spirit. He tells him, listen, you're not going to know. You're not going to know, Nicodemus, who's saved and who's not saved. Because it's not something you can tell. You think you're going to heaven, but the Spirit of God is <clears throat> quietly moving. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said, Art thou a master in Israel? And knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, We speak to you that you know, and testify we have seen, and you receive not your witness. If I had told you earthly things, would you believe not? How shall I believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. As Moses was lifted up, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the, in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ here, folks, and this is where I want to stop and just stop and just help you. This is who talking? Who's talking here? Jesus. Jesus. This isn't Pastor Cody's message. This isn't what the Baptist church teaches. Forget Pastor Cody. Forget the Baptist church. This is who? Jesus, Jesus the Son of God, talking to Nicodemus. And he says, Nicodemus, you want to go to heaven? 
Let me tell you how, Nicodemus. It's not about man coming up to heaven. It's about the Son of God coming down from heaven to earth. And he was lifted up on the cross. Just as Moses lifted the serpent up, and whoever looked on the serpent was saved, whoever looks and believes on Jesus is saved from hell. That's what that word means. Should not perish. Means you will not go to hell. You will not face the second death. How is someone not going to perish? By believing. Okay? It's not a work. It's not a thought. It's not some act. It is a belief. And who teaches that? Jesus. Who taught that? Jesus. Is that a Baptist doctrine? No. no. Is that a Catholic doctrine? No. Is that a community church doctrine? No. It's whose doctrine? Jesus. Jesus Christ is talking to Nicodemus just as I would talk to you, Tom. Just as I would talk to you, Miss Jana. And he says, you want to go to heaven? You want to have that second birth? You want to be born again, Nicodemus? Whosoever believeth in Jesus should not perish. For God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And let me just point this verse out, okay? If there's anybody that was qualified to condemn other people, to point the finger at them and say, shame, shame on you, naughty, naughty. <laughs> Jesus did not live his life to condemn people. Sometimes we Baptists think it's our job to go around and make the world right. Jesus didn't come to try and make people live right, to condemn them for their problems. Oh, well, you're this kind of way, and so you must not be. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus looked at everybody and he says, I didn't come to condemn you. I didn't come to throw you under the bus. I didn't come to judge you. He says, my purpose and my will as the Son of God is to save. To save. And folks, I can't stress enough. If Jesus didn't come to condemn, neither should you. Okay? Because he knew. And he could have judged. And he could have condemned. But it wasn't his heart to condemn people. It was his heart to save people. And I pray and I ask and I plead for God for you this morning for you to stop being condescending, condemning of other people and that you would look past people's sins and you'd say, they need a Savior. They need Jesus. They don't need me to look negatively on them or say negative things about me. They need me to share the gospel with them. When if they reject the gospel, that's okay. They're not rejecting you, they're rejecting Jesus. Folks, I pray, I plead that we would be like Jesus. Not going around to condemn people, but going around that they might be saved. Jesus says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. If this is all you get, get this in your head right now. Jesus made it very clear to Nicodemus that we can do nothing to negate the penalty of sin. I, Nicodemus, you're a religious ruler, but you're going to hell. You've lived your whole life following the law and pointing people to your religion, but Nicodemus, right now, because you're not a believer in me, you're on your way to hell. Listen, folks, Nicodemus was in church every Sunday. Nicodemus had the scriptures memorized. He was following the scriptures every day. And Jesus looked him in the eyeballs. And he says, you're condemned to perish, son, unless you believe in me. This is the end of the story. We don't know if Nicodemus got saved. We believe it is. We believe that he became a Christian and he followed Jesus Christ. But we don't know. Folks, this isn't my preaching. This is Jesus Christ telling Nicodemus, you can't get there. I came down to bring you there, to die. But you can't get there. 
And I hope and pray if you're relying on your religion or your church attendance or your prayers to get you to heaven, you are going to hell just like Nicodemus. We cannot ascend to heaven without accepting the gift that God gave to atone for our sin. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the, yeah, yeah. the what? Yeah. Yeah. Gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay? In a few weeks is my wife and I's anniversary. All right? And, and, and Lord willing, we'll be able to give each other gifts. Okay? A gift means I love you. Here's a gift that is free. Right? No strings attached. I'm not expecting anything returned. I love you, honey babe. Here's a gift. She's already bought me my birthday. Well, I bought my birthday gift, but it was approved by her. I bought me a, a Jurassic Park Lego set for my birthday. Okay, it's sitting in the closet waiting for me to open it. All right? And I get to open that gift on my birthday that I paid for, but it was a free gift. Okay? There's no strings attached to it. It's a gift to me. Right? Jesus says, I'm going to give you a what? A gift. No strings attached. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to work for it. It's a yeah. gift. Salvation is a gift, folks. Yeah. But I want us to understand something very quickly. Mankind has been messed up since the mistake we made in the garden. Therefore, by the offenses of one, Adam, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. But he says, even so, by the righteousness of one, Jesus, the free gift came upon all men unto justification. Man sinned. All of us have sinned. And that sin separates us. And the punishment for our sin is hell. That wasn't God's plan. God didn't plan for man to sin. God didn't plan to send man to hell. God planned for man to live forever. But we sinned. And you say, well, if I was Adam and Eve, I wouldn't have sinned. Yes, you would have. Eventually in your life, you would have done something that God said not to. And we all would have been condemned, just like Adam and Eve were. We all made our own mistakes. And our mistakes separate us from God. But just as our mistakes separate us from God, Jesus' act of salvation justifies us, forgives our sins. Folks, God does not want us to go to waste. His desire is not that we would go to hell. He wants us to find a way to the wondrous life in heaven. 2 Peter 3 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men is, but is long suffering to us for, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's heart and plan is that we would all be saved. But he gave us our own free will. God gave us the will to choose. Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go therein at. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. God does not place people in heaven or hell. He does not choose that for us. We choose it ourselves. He that believes is condemned. He that doesn't believe, it says he's condemned already. Why is the, why is the way that leads to destruction? And many there be that choose it. But narrow is the path. And few there be that find it. Folks, this morning I'm lifting up Jesus. I'm lifting up the gospel. Jesus Christ is trying to tell you, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. I'm right here. Believe in me. And yet, unfortunately, still people will leave here today choosing to reject Jesus. Choosing to go their own path. Because wide is the gate that leads to destruction. God deeply desires that you do not face the second death. He sent his son to die so you don't have to face the second death. Romans 7, 8, 5, 7, 8. For scarcely will a righteous man die... Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet 
sinners, Christ died for us. What does that mean, Pastor Cody? That verse simply means this. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love you. Do I love you enough to have a bullet in my chest for you? Some of you, yes. But unfortunately, some of you, I'd be like, I don't love you that much. <laughs> okay? I think of my son when the dog came after us. I stepped out of the way. The dog came and bit Micah. How great a father I am, right? I wouldn't even take a dog bite for my son. Oh, you're a terrible father. You're right. I'm a human being. I make mistakes. If I didn't know, if I go back again, I would have took in the bite for my son, but I didn't. Okay? Scarcely would anybody die for somebody. But God said, I cared for you all so much that even when you were evil and you were sinners and you were against me, I died for your sins. Every single one in the world. So that they would not have to face the second death. Jesus talked about being born again. We discussed that. So being born again means you don't have to face the second death. And that's in Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 through 17. John says, I saw the dead, small and great, everyone that's ever lived, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell were delivered up, and the dead were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Folks, God does not want us to face that second death. Since Adam sinned, Satan said, you surely will not die. And sure enough, Adam did die. He did. But listen, Adam didn't have to face the second death. But you know who did? One of his sons. One of his sons was not a believer. And was a murderer and left God. He had to face the second death because he was not a believer. And since Adam and Eve and their sons all throughout creation, people have chosen to go their own path and reject God. And because of that, they have to face the second death. That's not what God wants. God deeply desires, and he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come to suffer with us so that we could have victory over the second death. Folks, I hope and pray this morning that you'll understand that we cannot receive heaven without accepting the free gift that came to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We are saved from the penalty of our sins when we sincerely believe Jesus as our Savior. Psalm 103, 12. As far as east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. God has forgiven our sins from the beginning to the end. He's removed them. They are under the blood. When you become a believer, folks, not only do you get salvation, there are many other bonuses to being a believer. Psalm, Psalm 18.2 The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my butler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. When you have Jesus as your Savior, when you have the Lord as your Father, folks, there are many more bonuses than just being to go to heaven. And it's so sad that so many believers will believe in Jesus and they're not relish in the other bonuses that God gives them. He doesn't just want to be your savior, folks. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be your father. He wants to be your guide. He wants to be your supplier. He wants to be your strength. He wants to be everything to you that you possibly need. He doesn't just want to save you from your sins, folks. He wants to save you from everything and be your security. And this is my last thing that I want to say before we're done. There's no gotcha. With the gospel. What does that mean, Pastor Cody? That means that if today you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you say, Father, Lord, forgive me for my sin today, He will forgive you. And there's nothing else you have to do. Many people will say, Well, Pastor Cody, you got to keep doing, you got to keep working, you got to keep coming to church because you never know, you might lose your salvation. Is that what Jesus told Nicodemus? Mm -hmm. Did he say, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him and sinneth not and keeps going to church and gets baptized will be saved. Is that what Jesus told Nicodemus? If that was what he told him, then we would teach that. He says, for whosoever believeth in him should not perish. It's not about our works. It's not no gotcha. Gotcha. If you get saved today and you never come back to church, where are you going? Heaven. If you get saved today and you never get baptized, where are you going? Heaven. Heaven. If you get saved today and you never do anything right. If you get saved today and you die right away, where are you going? Heaven. And how do we know that? The thief on the cross, right? He looked at Jesus as he was about to die on the cross. And he said, Father, forgive me. And Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. Did he deserve to go to heaven? No. But he's there today. Why? Because he believed in Jesus. And he died and he went to heaven. Folks, there's no gotcha. I'm not trying to bring you into church to get your money. If I never see you again, but you get saved, hallelujah, you're on your way to heaven. That's all I care about. Is that you get to heaven? I'm not here trying to get you to come to church. I'm not here trying to pull you in some strings. No, I'm just here this morning declaring to you the gospel. And there's no gotcha with it. Therefore, as by the offense of one man, judgment came upon all men. Even so, the righteousness of one, the free gift. It's a gift. It's free. There's no strings attached. And lastly, folks, let's share that free gift of the gospel. Mark 16, 15. And he, Jesus said, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. If you have the gospel, praise God. But that also means you have a little bit of a responsibility. You don't have to. But you have a little bit of a responsibility to share the gospel with other people. That free gift of salvation that gives you a home in heaven is there for you to share with your family, to share with your friends, to share with your neighbors. Well, they don't want it. They don't want it. Okay, fine. Just share it with them. Give them the chance to receive the free gift so that they can go to heaven. I hope and pray this morning that this lesson is encouraging to you. So we're going to spend a few minutes in prayer. If you're here this morning and you're not sure if you're saved, just believe that what Jesus did on the cross is enough to pay for your sins and believe it with all your heart. If you are saved this morning and you're saved from the penalty of sin, pray for the Spirit of God and the Lord to remove the power of sin. That means the temptation, the power that sin has in your life. And all of us, may we pray that God would lead us to people that need to hear about the free gift of salvation. Pray these requests this morning. Just for a few minutes, let's spend some time in prayer. Ask the Lord to help us do this.